In today's video, a 28 day cycling training plan to take your fitness from where it is now to potentially being the fittest you've ever been with World Tour Cycling Coach, John Wakefield. John has been a performance cycling coach for the past 15 years, notably helping Tade Pogacar to his two Tour de France victories in 2020 and 2021. John now works with Team Bora Handsgrower, coaching riders at the top level of the sport while simultaneously running the Science to Sport Lab here in the center of Girona. Science to Sport is a performance cycling lab that deals with bike fitting rider testing and performance coaching and in this video he's going to run us through 28 days of solid structured training to help you become the best cyclist that you can be. This video follows on from a seven day training plan video that I did make a few weeks ago. You can see that up here but in this video we're going to talk about more structure, more hours, more specific intervals and get you to a greater level of fitness than you've ever been at before. Another thing to note if you have watched that video and you are basing your training on that video is that in this video rather than the sessions being the one to one and a half hours in length that we discussed in that previous video, they will now be between one and a half and two hours in length. As you'll be able to see as we go through the video and discuss each session, I do show a small graphic down the bottom for the key session so you can see exactly what the intervals look like. A couple of other points I do wanna make before we get into this training session video is that I had a lot of comments and a lot of questions asking about gym workouts in the last video. I've since spoken with John about gym workouts during this structured training plan. And although we don't discuss specific gym workouts within this plan. If you are interested in going to the gym and doing strength work, we usually recommend doing those on the harder days of working out and not on your recovery days. It's really important when you do your gym sessions to do them on either the same days that you have a key session on the bike or an endurance day and keep your recovery days or your days off the bike to as little movement as possible. The next point I wanna make before we get into it is I wanna say that this is my last video for 2023, but I wanna say a massive thank you to you guys for watching my videos, commenting, liking and subscribing throughout this year. On January 1st, it will be three years since I posted my first video on YouTube. And in that time, it has completely changed my life and my lifestyle. And it's all thanks to you guys. When I posted my first video, I honestly never thought I would even crack a thousand subscribers. So to have almost 37,000 people here on the day of filming is absolutely humbling. And I really do need to say a massive thank you to you guys for anyone who has subscribed, anyone who's ever clicked on a video. It means the world to me and I really, really appreciate it. Along with this, I also do wanna say a massive thank you to everyone who has been in my videos this year. From the pro cycling training camps I did in January through to going to Strada Bianchi with Shooter in March, I wanna say a massive thank you to John as well, of course, for all his contributions he's made this year, not only for my own personal coaching, but for all the wisdom that he's shared with you guys, hoping that we can help improve your cycling experience. So I think that about wraps up the admin for the moment. Let's jump into this last video for 2023, a 28-day cycling training plan. I'm super excited for it. I hope you guys are gonna get something out of it. Let's do it. Alrighty, welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. Today we are back here in the studio at Sciences Sport. Or we're not actually back here, we've followed on from the last video that I mentioned in that intro there. Today we're talking through a 28 day training plan that every cyclist can follow. Now if you haven't seen the seven day training plan video, I do suggest you go and watch that first. We talk through some key sessions in there and a few of the more basics of training if you're new to the sport of cycling training. Uh, but today we're gonna talk through a bit more of a, a structured training plan for an entire month and we guarantee if you follow this plan from day one through to day 28 we guarantee you'll be a better cyclist at the end of it i'm also going to ask john some questions about the structure of the training about the intensity of the training and i want to start out with more the uh, giving us a bit of a broad overview so we'll launch straight into it can you tell us before we go into the specific sessions what have you got for us for an entire month i've tried to sort of periodize it so you kind of follow a essentially a periodized training plan. Um, it's obviously not personalized to yourself, but we're gonna do everything from sort of what you would do in an off season with neuromuscular work and metabolic work. And then we start slowly moving into some threshold stuff. And then we start eventually moving into like your peak phase. And you know, a little bit, uh, I've done it also a little bit backwards where your volume sort of has increased as your intensity increases, where I, I typically do it the other way, but it just, it works out well. You know, your, uh, your, your introduction into the training and into those first two weeks is good. And then, uh, and then things start getting real. Also, just one quick question before we get into it. 
This is going to be, we're still basing this 28 day training plan on someone who does have say a power meter, but if someone doesn't have a, a power meter, yep. what other metrics can they use and what are the advantages or disadvantages of those? You can still always use heart rate, you know, standard, uh, standard training tool and metric. You can also use RPE, so your perceived exertion. And that would be, you would score if you had to say out of 10, a all out effort would be nine and a half, 10 out of 10, and a super easy recovery day would be anything from one to three, maybe four out of 10. So you would score it kind of uh, based on that. So but, RPE is a very simple metric, really. Yeah, super simple. The, the lower the number, the larger the volume of time you can sustain that number for. Yeah, and hundred percent. You get up to ten, it becomes very short period. Yeah, correct. You essentially have a have a pyramid. I'm very good on the lows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should we should we get into week one? Uh, week one, you said before, is going to we're going to start a little bit easy. As I said, if you haven't seen the seven day training video, go and watch that one first. But I feel that week one of this session is not actually the same as week one of that no. seven day training plan. What have you got for us? So for the first sort of week, uh, sort of first two weeks, we'll work on our neuromuscular pathways, which is more commonly your low cadence work, and we'll throw in some metabolic work, working on utilizing lactate as a fuel source, mitochondrial growth. So we sort of combine those two for the first sort of two weeks. As we had planned on, on, on our previous model, we had used Monday as our easy activation day. Being day one or Monday, our activation session would, would be the same. So hour and a half, two hours. And during that, you would just do three to four 15 second activation or sprints. We'd be sort of middle of the block uh, at the back on the cassette. Start your sprint and do not change down. Just keep on sprint, keep on spinning out. You can do it seated or standing. Um, I prefer standing, but just let, let's just get those uh, muscles working and, and activating. Tuesday or our day two, Again, hour and a half, two hours, depending on if you have a slightly shorter or longer warm up and cool down after the session. But you always want to keep your intervals the same. And for that session, we have six by four minutes, low cadence. That would be anything on 45 to 55 RPM. The reason that range is sort of within 10 RPM is are you conditioned to doing low cadence stuff? If you're not, I would suggest start off on that 50, 55. If you have done some of that work before, you can drop it to that sort of 45 range. Uh, Wednesday for the first week, we'll have a faster drive. So essentially wake up, have coffee is fine. And I, I essentially want that hour and a half or two hours of easy recovery, sort of zone one, very low zone two in a fasted state. If you also are new to that session, you can have some protein beforehand. So a boiled egg works well, just to kind of have something in the stomach, but just no carbohydrates. Do the session, low intensity, and obviously when you get back, you can eat as per normal. So with the fasted ride, because there's a couple of these coming up in the next few weeks, what's the aim of the fasted ride? Is to get your body to use a different fuel source, I believe? Yeah, correct. So the short version is you, among other physiological changes, you are teaching your body to use fat as a fuel source. And endurance athlete, the longer you use fat as a fuel source, you know, the more economical you are at the end of the day before you're turning over to, to sugars or carbohydrates. And yeah. I think it's probably important to say, to reiterate, with the fasted ride, the main point of it is to do it very easy. Yeah. You don't, don't need to do don't any Don't get out and hammer it. So just have a black coffee in the morning, a very easy ride. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Correct. And then what have you got for us next? The next day, as per the, the previous week's uh, session with video, Thursday is off. So eat, sleep, do the dishes, take your wife out, whatever the deal is, so you can get on, on back, back on the bike for the next few days. Focus on recovery like you know some stretching if you do call etc get a massage something like that so thursday always is day off yeah correct Great. friday is again our key session and week one we've got uh, two by 20 minute metabolics so that would be as you said warm up either longer or shorter to get your hour and a half or two hours and then you do two by 20 minutes which would be sort of if it's a heart rate kind of highest zone three low zone four if it's an rpe scale you'd be typically around seven seven and a half and if you are looking at a percentage of threshold, you would typically be on 80 to 85%. Yeah, someone wanted to do a little bit of sort of uh, a longer warm up and a longer warm down to add in some extra hours there. That's okay as well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely yeah. no problem at all. Great. And then <laughs> let's launch into the first weekend. What have you got yeah. the first weekend for us? Uh, first weekend is again our endurance. So 
got down for three and a half hours on the Saturday and then on Sunday is just an easy hour and a half, two hours recovery. Obviously it is fine if you have engagement in that to sw switch those two days around. Just remember that then on that Monday, forego the activation if you do the endurance on the Sunday and just use that as an easy recovery day. So we did discuss this in the seven day training plan video, but basically before you do a key session, we really want you to have either a day off or a very easy day. So if you do switch your weekend days around, just make sure you're giving yourself an easy day before you start that key session which comes on the Tuesday yeah Alrighty, awesome. So week one, we've kind of got into it. You've got some training under your belt there. You're gonna be a little bit fatigued, but not crazy fatigued. Hopefully the wife or the husband is not too annoyed when you're going out and riding your bike so much. What have you got for us for week two? Yeah, so going into week two, uh, before we go into week two, just remember that with the program, your intensity does increase every week. So just pay attention to that um, and just understand that it is coming. Again, the Monday or your day one would either be a recovery or your activation ride, depending on which day you did your injury your longer ride on the weekend. Day two or the Tuesday, you would do four by four minutes of the low cadence, four minutes on, four minutes off recovery. You would then have a 10 minute recovery at the end of that, of the end of the fourth one, and you would go directly then into a 20 minute metabolic session, complete the 20 minutes and then easy recovery and off the bike. So that's four by four minutes and metabolic in the same session. Yeah, correct. Yeah, great. Wednesday or day three, you can just go ride your bike. Hour and a half, two hours, no structure, no rules, whatever, just uh, feel free to, to go and ride it. Try not to find a group ride and smash it, because you obviously do in, in two days time have, a, have another key session coming up, but just go ride your bike and have fun. Thursday or day four, we'd be off again. We're gonna keep that uh, kind of structure throughout the week. So again, make, make good with your wife at home or your husband or your, or get on Tinder and then <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and then uh, on Friday, we uh, kick off again and we start that with a 20 minute metabolic session, 10 minute recovery after that. And we go straight into a 10 minute threshold interval to finish that uh, training session off. And then obviously easy recovery. Okay, cool. So that one sounds again like your first key session in the week. There's a bit of metabolic, a bit of intensity in there, a bit more structure to that one. You're definitely going to be starting to feel your legs after these. Yeah, correct. And it's also sort of your like introduction into the following weeks coming up because obviously our, our intensity starts now. Yeah, cool. Okay, you said the intensity starts now. Yeah. So this well, has just been warming yourself yeah, up. Yeah, that's, that's warming okay. up. Yeah, cool. All right, that's warming up according well, to John That's what you asked for. That's what you asked for. Okay, so that's the that's the Friday of week two. What have yeah. you got for the weekend for that week um, two? Yeah, very, very similar to, to the previous weekend. So three and a half hours on the Saturday. However, the Sunday's ride would then be a fasted ride is what we'd introduce to that. It is completely fine if you do the metabolic and that threshold session on day five. Or the, or, the, or the Friday and then do the fasted session before Sunday's endurance ride. Just remember that to fuel correctly after that fasted ride on, on, on uh, Saturday. Yeah, so just a refresher on the fasted ride. That is a wake up in the morning, don't eat any carbs. If you have a coffee, a black coffee only, don't put milk in it. Go out and do a very, very easy ride. Don't push too hard. Come home, fully refuel. And if you are doing that fasted ride, I guess we want to say don't do it any later than midday. No, so, you know, you want to be aiming to do it in the morning yeah. so that you're not starving. Or if, if you do ride, some people do ride in the, in the afternoons if they get home from work or, or school or whatever the case may be, is try then not fuel. So try water only for three hours before that session. So like if you ride at three, don't eat anything, but just purely water or whatever from sort of 12 o'clock. So again, that weekend, you've got one endurance ride, one, well, easy, faster ride, same as the week before. Yeah, correct. Yeah, cool. Alrighty, and then week three, sounds like things are gonna start hotting yeah, I think up. Things pick up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, Monday, very simple, either recovery or our activation ride. The Tuesday or day two is three by 15 minutes at uh, threshold. Simple, standard standard threshold session, really good. 15 minutes on, 10 minutes off, warm up, cool down either side of that. And from a, a value side, you would be looking at anything from a percentage of FTP, probably 95 to 105%. On a RPE value, you'd be on that seven and a half, eight. Heart rate would be purely zone four. 
So that's a, a real stock standard threshold session. Standard at the box. Yeah, yeah, but you are meant to feel it at the end of it. I mean, three, you're ending up with 45 minutes at threshold there. Yeah, you're gonna know it. Yeah, yeah especially after your first two weeks of war yeah. warming they'll, up. They'll unlike <laughs> yeah, yeah. this video. <laughs> yeah. Please don't unlike the video. <laughs> Actually, I should drop that in here now. If you're enjoying this video, please do like it. You can unlike it if you're really angry and then like it again for me. Yeah, on, on the Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come back and like it again yeah. later on. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're enjoying this kind of content please do subscribe before we launch into our next day although the next day is an easy day right? yeah next day so is you're easy. definitely liking it yeah then. exactly this okay. uh, you'll forget about it 10 minutes after yeah the next day is our easy recovery day but this day is a faster day so just pay attention to that thursday off nothing Nothing. Relax. You're going to be getting good at cooking by this stage. Yeah. Okay? And your wife or husband will love you either way. This is a match made in heaven, this program. <laughs> and then Friday or day five is our over under session. So we're going to do three by 10 minute over unders. Also, very standard session, really good. So you'll do three minutes on, like steady, and then you'll do two minutes at a, at a much higher power, and then go straight down three minutes steady, and then like a, a two minute spike and you'll repeat again. You want to be sort of 90, 95%. I personally like 90% of, of FTP for the three minutes. And if you do the two minutes, I like it honestly like 110, 115% if you can maintain that. Otherwise 105 to 110 is good. For heart rate users, you would be on zone three and zone five. Yeah, cool. So the point of this is to go like a little bit below the threshold and then you're going much higher above, yeah. recovering while still pushing some power. Correct. And then repeat again yeah and so you're saying there's three by ten minutes correct of those and then ten minutes recovery in between okay so it's yeah. ten on ten off ten, ten on. on ten yeah off. great so that's your second key session on that friday yeah. and then leading into the weekend now people are going to be quite tired but they've got to keep pushing if they want to keep improving here what have you got for us for the weekend um so on the weekend then you'd have four hours again saturday sunday whatever works for you and a super easy recovery day like really super easy recovery day on that uh, on that second day of the weekend. I what? feel like yeah. by this time, people are gonna be wanting that recovery day. Oh, it's yeah. very easy in the first couple of weeks of a training block to be like, no, I wanna, I wanna ride, I'm easy, you know, I enjoy riding, I wanna get out there and ride. But I can tell you from personal experience, having been coached by John as well, <laughs> when those easy days roll around after a yeah. few weeks of the, the periodization, you really want them, so. Yeah. So they, like typically there, you would, you would get an email, like a message or a phone call and say, oh, busy Saturday, I uh, can't do this long ride, but they just want the recovery day. Yeah. So if you need to throw that trump card, throw it, absolutely fine. Okay. Um, so I mean, you can have yeah. the recovery day of the Saturday. Absolutely. But then we're looking for four hours on the other day of the weekend. Correct. So a reasonable amount of time there. Uh, and that's what finishes us off on week three. Cool, a well-earned yeah. easy day on Monday, then I guess week four. Yeah, super easy day Monday. Okay. Monday is, uh, is definitely when you've got to toughen up on, on, on week four. So Monday, again, either easy recovery or activation standard, standard session that we're running. And the Tuesday or day two would be five by four minutes. And you would have typically three and a half minutes rest in between each four minute uh, interval. And those are full anaerobic. So you would be looking at sort of from a power meter uh, user, sort of 110 if you are able to push up and you are sort of above that level, you can do 115% for each one but typically run 110 if it's a heart rate user it would be typically very high zone four zone five by now also pay attention your heart rate may be a bit suppressed because of um, fatigue so just pay attention to that and as a rpe user you'd be really clear on, on eight and a half nine even sometimes nine and a half depending on how you feel really towards this week one thing that is interesting and i want to ask you about because you've worked with some riders many riders who have been to the tour de france you helped a rider win the tour de france twice <laughs> there's this thing that comes about within the tour or within grand tours i know where guys are getting stronger throughout a grand tour yeah and they're also getting more fatigued so while they might feel weaker they're actually ending up stronger yeah would you say anything because we're doing our own little grand tour here of four weeks of training would you say that by this stage that session there sounds very hard five by four it's tough. minutes it's super tough really hard yeah people should have made some fitness and strength adaptations by this stage though yeah i guess would you say that is correct? No, definitely. And it's not like you've gone from week one to, which is essentially really low intensity um, and medium intensity to kind of all up, you know? So when you do that 
that four minutes would feel a lot worse than what it would typically feel now. You know, so that, that over under session will give you a good awakening for that. But as a, us as a company, you know, in our coaching library and, and our methodology, that five by four minutes really returns an incredible investment mm. in terms of stimulus. Um, all of us, yeah, like we, we strong believers in it. Like, um, as we said before, everything that we do is, it's validated science on why we prescribe or what we do. So it, it's, a re- it's a super tough session, um, but it's a really good session. And what I find personally, not with every single person, but with a lot of people is, if you take the average of those four minutes, so say you do five and it's 300, 310, three, whatever, however you go, and you are consistent, you'll typically get what your best 10 minute is okay. as an average. Interesting. Um, and then you kind of know it. It's, it's a really good good session. So it's super tough, but it's, it's really, really good return on investment. Yeah, so that might be the key session of all of the key sessions. Yeah, hey? yeah correct. Yeah, cool. Okay, so you'll definitely be feeling it by this stage where into sort of day two of week four. What have you got for day three of week four? Relax. Like, <laughs> <laughs> super easy recovery. Like, uh, I mean, 15 kilometers an hour just riding and spinning okay. your legs, super easy. Like try and keep it under 100 watts the entire way. Correct. Including on climbs. Yeah, correct. Don't go near climbs. Yeah, super easy recovery and then straight into Thursday, which is a day off. You know, especially on this day, by four weeks in, make sure you're eating right, you're feeling correctly and, and stuff like that. It's super important. Then we go into Friday, um, also another one of our key sessions, or day five being Friday. And that is a lot shorter, but a lot more aggressive of a session. So that is what I call 30 seconds and one minute alternating. So you'll do four by four. So you'll do 30 seconds flat out sprint. Then you'll do five minute recovery. You'll do one minute all out effort, five minute recovery, and then you go back to the, the 30 seconds. So it's 30 seconds, one minute, 30 seconds, one minute, four times for each. So you get eight, eight intervals in, in total, five minute rest in between. And those are, they all out. Like your RPE needs to be 110, not just 10. Yeah, wow. Um, it's super short, super violent, but you recover straight away. And there's no, like, a, it, it's short enough that you don't really have to pace yourself um, because you do recover. Yeah. yeah. So that's a very, very high intensity. That's just full gas. Nice but... one to end that week. Almost yeah. end that week, not quite end the week. Yeah, no, not, not quite in the week. Your key sessions, your four four weeks of key sessions. Yeah. Building into a big final weekend. What have you got for us for our big final weekend here of our four week training plan? Yeah, so but obviously both days you can swap as as time allowance is fine. So four hours and is is our long endurance ride again. And with regards to our recovery day, you can do one of two sessions. One being a fasted session, the other one being a fueled recovery day. The reason I say this is you at the end of a four week block. There will be fatigue. Possibly if you haven't fueled well or recovered well, there might be a little bit of compromised immune system. And I don't want you to do a fasted ride and kind of send it over the edge, you know? So just pay attention to that in terms of how you're feeling and, and how your body has reacted to these last four weeks. And just remember, if you do do the fasted ride, absolutely no problem, but always fuel completely correctly and, and strongly afterwards. Yeah. Awesome. This is an amazing amount of training information. I no doubt said at the start, but one thing I want to reiterate is the fact that this is designed for people who have done some training before, who have the hours to do it, and who are dedicated to doing it for the entire time. But we do guarantee that if you follow this from day one through to day 28, you are going to end up a fitter cyclist. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to ask you a couple of other questions now that we're at the end of the four weeks. Can you just give us a run through of, typically with periodization, you'd have a number of weeks building up and then you'd yeah. have an easy week to let all the training really sink in. What yeah. would you suggest as just a roundabout way of saying what people should do in week five? Yeah, so say you had done, as an example, 12 hours this week. On average, I would tell you then to kind of cut it down to eight hours. So you can do hypothetically Monday off, Tuesday, Wednesday, super easy recovery, Thursday off again, Friday, kind of an activation ride, and then you can get going again on Saturday and Sunday as you feel. You would have had more than enough time to recover. You would have had a great adaptation and, and I'm going to attack that group right now. Yeah, <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the interesting things I do always say to people as well is it's okay to do all of these sessions by yourself. And if you guys take a few weekends off your group ride, you do this training and then you come back, you're gonna absolutely tear some legs off. So don't be afraid of riding by yourself on the weekends as well. I love to ride by myself if you've seen any of my videos 
videos, you'll know that. But I also find that writing by myself is often not only a really good way to concentrate on what I'm doing, but also then to get the best adaptations because I'm always pushing into the wind. I'm not doing anything on anyone else's schedule. I'm, I'm always yeah. focused on my training and I'm always sure. pushing against the wind on those endurance days and things like that. You know, four weeks in, in fairness, is, it's not a lot, it's one month. It's one month. Like it's nothing, you know, you can even, every alternator group ride every second weekend as an example or something like that and, and you know, not be kind of totally isolated, but just what you mustn't do is use a group ride every time you go to one as a complete smash fest. Yeah. You know, you kind of like a little bit ruining what your long plan, long-term plan is here. So just kind of have a bit of maturity and, and understanding and rather do the training and then go back to the group ride and then smash in. Yeah, no, this sounds great. I mean, I think this is a nice way to structure the year. If you're a social rider, but you want to improve as a cyclist, throwing in a month like this every three months will mean that you definitely improve and your rate of what's difficult becomes lower. So you're able to push a little bit harder as you yeah. improve. And so then another question I have uh, before we sign off here, do you have some overarching suggestions or overarching advice for this entire four weeks that people need to make sure they bear in mind for the entire time? Um, yeah, if you do need to miss a session because life gets in the way, which which it does for, for us normal folk, you know, try rather drop a, you know, either sh if it's time crunched, warm up and warm down shorter. So you still get the duration of the intervals in, which is important. And then the pre and post riding afterwards or before, just you can shorten that. Try not to drop a full day of, of, of the key session. And that's that's the first thing because that's essentially what you want to improve on. And then I would say probably the, one of the most important things for any training program, especially when you're now following structure and there's a big workload and intensity, is you need to fuel for your training. You know, anyone can give you any training, and if you're not finishing them correctly because you're not fueled, which is typically what the problem is you're wasting your own time and your own effort so make sure that you have a breakfast or something before your, your key sessions and during the key sessions you know if, if it's an hour and a half you want to be taking at least one bottle of carbohydrate mix and a gel or a bar whichever one you kind of prefer so you kind of want to get in that sort of 60 80 grams of carbohydrates an hour and for your longer endurance rides and it's kind of medium low intensity you you'd be looking at about 60 grams an hour. So just pay attention to that. It also helps during the ride to keep consistent, to have energy. It also helps post ride in terms of recovery that you're not completely depleted going forward. And also post ride, make sure that you recover properly and eat and manage. It's super important. Yeah, that's actually, it is. As John yeah. just said, it's super important, it's critical. If you're finding that you're really struggling with any of these sessions, have a look at what you've got in your bottles as well, because I often find I will feel terrible and realize, oh, I've only got 40 grams of carbohydrates, yeah. not the required. Age or water. Or <laughs> try and not make that mistake too much. Uh, but yeah, if you're struggling with any of the sessions, yeah. make sure to focus on, on eating the entire way through because you'll get home, you'll feel better for it. Start yeah. recovery process um, faster. And also something to pay attention to is that, you know, if it's, you're not having a great day, but you're able to, to ride and you're motivated enough to do the session, but maybe the intensity is a bit too much, just lower it a bit. You know, like as an example, lower the RPE by one point, lower your heart rate by a few beats or 10 watts in terms of your power and just finish the session, you still complete it, you're feeling good, you've achieved it and then fight, fight another day. But I will also say on the other end of that is if you start and it's going pear shape from day one, rather just call it. Don't force something for, for nothing. Yeah, that's actually also an advice I really like. Like try and get the session done to the best of your ability, even if yeah. you're not hitting the numbers, unless it's an absolutely dire situation. Yeah. Give it up. Which so. is literally every time I write about it. <laughs> it's a dire situation. <laughs> yeah, well, do as he says, not as he Yeah, does. not as I do. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so one thing I want to say just before we do check out of this video, it's been a nice long one. Hopefully you guys have got something out of it. This is, a again, a training plan that's designed for a broad range of people who have got 28 days to commit to cycling hard and wanting to improve. But if you do want a more personalized training plan, John and Science to Sport do do personalized coaching plans. There's a link down in the description down below. So you can jump down there, click the link if you email John and you're asking for coaching let him know you've come through myself and come through the channel and that also helps to support me in making more videos like this into the future it's also just a really good tracking tool to know where John's getting his clients from and uh yeah we hope to see you guys in another video very yeah. soon some more training advice yeah uh, we might do some more bike fitting stuff soon as well yeah correct so, correct hope you've enjoyed the video and uh yeah take care cheers right. Ciao. happy training